Welcome to Western Window. Today, we present another episode of Table Talk with Danica Kylander, exploring topics and interviewing people who are making a difference in the world today. So stay tuned and enjoy the show. Welcome to Table Talk. My name is Danica Kylander and I will be your host today. I am excited to welcome Dr. Art Sherwood, the David Cole Professor of Entrepreneurship here at Western and the director of the Idea Institute to the show uh, so that we can do some interviews. Before we start the interview though today, I would like to talk about a little bit of background about what's happening here at Western. About a year ago, Western was designated as an Ashoka Changemaker campus, Ashoka U Changemaker Campus, which means that we excel at social innovation education. So we've spent the last six months, eight months, really looking around and celebrating what we've been doing well. Uh, the Energy Institute, the Center for Service Learning, the Leadership Institute, Woodring College, Fairhaven College, the list is so long. Um, we decided to put some of our great minds up on stage for TEDx WWU. We celebrated during Active Minds Changing Lives Week. And then in the same time frame, we actually started looking for some of the gaps in the system that we could strengthen um, from some new programs. So we brought Art here today to talk about the Idea Institute, which is new here at Western, and the new focus on entrepreneurship and innovation in the minors. So welcome, Art. Thank you for Thanks. coming. Um, could you tell us a little bit first, before you tell us about the Idea Institute, talk to us about why you chose Western. I know that as you were looking for a new job, you had plenty of options of places to choose from. Why here? Mostly, it was due to the opportunity to come build something that's really amazing. Yes. Um, Western was talking about how do we merge all of these different desires to be a, a university that has a lot of impact. Mm -hmm. And that was really attractive to me. Most of the other opportunities uh, uh, in the academic world were mostly trying to build um, what I would say are more traditional types of entrepreneurship programs. But here it was quite different. Mm -hmm. It was trying to say, how do we have impact on our community? How do we have impact on our environment? How do we have impact in a way that really brings an enormous amount of people together? Perfect. So we started asking ourselves, what could we really build that would be um, something that not only distinguished Western uh, in the world, mm -hmm. but really uh, drove the sort of impact that we wanted to have? What are some of the other components of the IDEA Institute? And just to clarify, I don't think we've said it yet, IDEA stands for? Interdisciplinary Entrepreneurship in Action. Interdisciplinary Entrepreneurship in Action, perfect. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about what traditional entrepreneurship has looked like? Um, and you can include innovation there as well. And then also what, what we are trying to redefine and reshape it as here mm -hmm. at Western. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So traditionally, entrepreneurship has been mostly housed in the business schools. Mm -hmm. And I, that's where I come from. I have four business degrees. That's where I was teaching it in Indiana. The difference here that we wanted to do is we want to say, how do we get everyone to access it? How do mm -hmm. we allow for different students from all different uh, schools to come in and be part of this really amazing thing that we're trying to do? Yes. And how do we think about it? Mm -hmm. One of the things that we fight every day, I certainly do, is this idea that entrepreneurship is some sort of exclusion, exclusionary thing. Like, right. Know. I hear it all the time. You're yeah. born an entrepreneur. Yeah, born or like, aren't you supposed to be special? Right, yeah. Aren't you supposed to be white? But of course, if that was the case, then why would we teach it, right? right. Um, and it's the same thing with innovation. And so taking those two different ideas, we take a very different approach. We, we think about entrepreneurship being for everyone. Mm -hmm. And because entrepreneurship is really a set of behaviors and an attitude. Mm -hmm. The behaviors are entrepreneurs, they identify opportunity, and they bring innovation to bear on those opportunities, and they bring people and resources together to drive change yes. in some sort of context in an organization. And the attitude part is that I can do this. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to build a program that um, really taught people about those different pieces, mm -hmm. plus built the attitude of I can be someone who's a change maker. Right. Again, people often say, well, I'm not creative, I'm, I'm not innovative, I'm not mm. all these sorts of things. But mm. the way that we look at innovation is that innovation comes in multiple different flavors. Innovation might be something that incrementally changes things for the better. 
in small pieces. Increment uh, innovation might be things that completely disrupt the way that we do things. Right. All of those are perfectly acceptable when we do them all the time and those things can be taught. Mm -hmm. And it also falls in that we're not just about startups. It's not just um, a new venture creation. It's about being entrepreneurial and being innovative in whatever setting you're choosing to work in. Right. So it could be existing organizations, could, from the businesses to the government to nonprofits to uh, you name it, or it's possible that you choose to start a new venture and we do those things too. Right, where instead of just identifying a problem and going, oh, God, and either working around it or kind of bemoaning it for the rest of your life, this then creates that sort of attitude and persona of a change maker. So here's your tools, mm -hmm. make some change. Whether you're an entrepreneur, which means you're changing from within the, an institution, an entrepreneur creating something new, an innovator sort of sliding through the system or something in between, am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. it's, it's the idea that you can really build a deep empathy for people or situations that are happening. Mm -hmm. But it's not just knowing it. It's not just understanding it. It's actually saying, what could it look like if the problem were solved? What could it look like if the challenge were accepted? What could it look like if the opportunity were taken advantage of? And knowing then how to bring people and resources together to drive the sort of change that's going to change the world. What an exciting program. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yes. Um, can you talk about the parts that you've already launched so far? Like, tell us about what the students are doing right now, and then we'll get into some of the other components mm -hmm. later. So we built um, a minor, mm -hmm. and the minor, we, we built a minor intentionally. It's important that the minor be able to be attached to your major mm -hmm. in order to make your major even better. Uh, the students we've had, the first round we had 26 students, the next round we had 46. And the cool thing about the way that we've designed it is that the minor goes after and teaches about opportunities, people, and resources. But we've built a, what many folks might be familiar with as a multi-age classroom. Mm -hmm. So imagine uh, you're in a, in a room, and it's a two-hour it's a two -hour class, but not only the, the rookies come in the room, but the most senior students come in the room. Wow. And they're all in there in one uh, setting. So mm -hmm. you have six quarters worth of students and all that experience in there, which allows for multiple scales of mentoring, which allows for us to build really cool interdisciplinary teams um, with different levels of experience. Mm -hmm. And so you, you go in, there's 100 plus students in the room, we get, they kind of get their assignments for the day and then they kind of break up. And we have such great student leadership that the student leaders then help make sure different things happen. Right. Mm -hmm. What kind of ideas are already sort of germinating in the foundations mm -hmm. course? We, we spend significant time trying to uh, help them build this concept of empathy and then we talk about building their empathy muscles. Yeah. Because oftentimes one of the mistakes that people have made with entrepreneurship in the past mm -hmm. is that they build a beautiful solution that nobody wants. Right. And that's an enormous waste of time, talent, money, and so on. Right. So instead we start up front with you know building this idea of empathy and leveraging diversity and then they go into uh, building projects. And the projects really are around early on, let's just build an idea. And what we assume is their idea stinks at first. Right. Because most ideas probably been thought up somewhere else. Maybe no one needs them or whatever, and so we help them develop them. And some of those uh, ones that we have uh, are hearing from this quarter is one student group is, is concerned about uh, sex trafficking in the local area. Mm -hmm. And the local area is p really important because we try to say, don't go and try to solve problems all over the rest right. of the world. Yes. Solve them here. Thank you. Thank solve you them for where that. you are. Yes. Yeah, right? And actually another project that's going on inside uh, um, that the students are working on is uh, something that we have a vision of creating both an on-campus and off-campus mm -hmm. idea hatchery. So imagine you're someone who has an idea and you need some help developing it. Yes. Where do you turn to? Many folks have traditionally turned to the Small Business Development Center mm -hmm. or they try to go to SCORE, and those are awesome partners in all of this. What we're believing that we can help with is that very, very early stage idea development. So before you would get to business planning, which the Small Business Development Center helps you with very well, mm -hmm. How do we develop these early stage ideas? And we've started partnering, um, exploring partnerships with Downtown Bellingham Partnership mm -hmm. to have uh, space downtown to be able to um, provide this sort of mentoring 
for students, for potentially community members from advanced students, nice. and we'll have one of those on campus as well. And additionally, we're building out uh, multiple professional experience possibilities for students from shadowing to mentoring, uh, being mentored from folks who are in the areas that they're interested in, to doing internships and so on. Great, so just to clarify then, if there was somebody watching the show and they said, wow, that sounds like a really cool program, like those students are gonna turn out different than some of the others. They're engaging in creative processes every single day, they're learning and focusing on their empathy skills, I might want them as an intern, mm -hmm. then all they would need to do is sort of contact with the Idea, Idea Institute mm -hmm. and say, how can we make this a good fit, right? So that's one yeah. of the links to the community. Yep, yep. Am I correct? It's definitely one of the okay. links to the community. And what are some other links if, if somebody's watching this and saying, that sounds like a great program, but I'm not engaged as a student at Western right now. How could I get involved? What are some of the things that people could do? Right, so because of course the, the minor is, is built for students here. Yes. And we're also building a, a variety of other curricular offerings, which we're starting to pilot in the fall as well. Um, another possibility is, and these are two areas that we're working on in parallel, one being uh, the possible uh, connection to the, the idea hatchery or whatever that ends up being mm -hmm. called so they can get help being developed there but we're also building out um, a variety of professional offerings because we know that not only is there immense expertise here mm -hmm. at Western but we need to be able to uh, connect with those outside. Western's definitely uh, on board with being a community player um, and supporter with this and Within five years, I believe that we'll have built out something that's really able to uh, have impact in just many, many areas. So. What an incredible program, Art. Thank you so much. In October 2014, Western Washington University was designated as one of 30 Ashoka U Changemaker campuses in the world. Here's more about what Ashoka is. What is Ashoka? <laughs> the million dollar question. Being associated with Ashoka and this process is the most amazing day-by-day, year-by-year tutorial in how the world works, where the world is going, and also in courage and values. Ashoka is impact. It's changing the system. If one were to do the forensics in significant impact in healthcare and impact in education and the environment, you will often find the fingerprints of Ashoka there. How do we change the world for the good of all? It's always a big pattern change idea, but only if it's in the hands of a really good entrepreneur. It's that combination. Bill's brilliance was he was one of the earliest to recognize the social innovators who were attacking problems in incredibly new and enlightened in different ways. The oddballs, the misfits, the folks that their families and friends couldn't figure out what it was that they were doing. When I was 10 years old, I built a solar car. The battery of my car, it wasn't charging well enough. How can I charge my car more efficiently? Why are solar panels so limited? Over 80% of the Ashoka Fellows have started something by their early teens. I had a chance to present my project at a science fair. And the girl sitting next to me uh, was telling me, you could actually take this technology to Indonesia. And I feel like a light bulb kind of went off in my head at that moment. No one can ever tell them that they can't change the world after that. Something that I built in my basement is now being assembled and um, maintained by people in Mexico that need uh, this technology. They cannot be a happy person in life until they have changed the pattern of society. And so the entrepreneur is in a lifelong creative process. I love the fact that people are Ashoka Fellows for life. Once you're in that community, you're always part of it. The better job that we can do in helping them be architects of their own solution, the more effective that solution is going to end up being. Being involved with Ashoka set a high bar for the rest of the philanthropy that we get involved with because I can see these are people who are driving true change. I want to go with the people who are passionate. People who work for Ashoka all around the world are doing the search for fellows in their countries. They really understand the context of the problems. They understand what a new idea is and what a potentially good one looks like. They were asking questions like, how are things going to be different in rural Kenya in 10 years? Typically, I was used to being asked, you know, what is your budget going to do between now and the next two quarters? The course of human history has been towards a more and more empathy-based society. And this is the critical moment where we shift to everyone being powerful. 
It's the only way that you can have real equality. Those play works we're going in, right, and we're working on recess, and we're, we're bringing play into the school in this very constructive, positive way, but it isn't about us coming in and doing it for the kids or to the kids, but rather by norming empathy. The kids become the primary actors, and it's the kids who are achieving these really significant changes. What Ashoka is working on to make sure that everyone has that gift, that we really do become a change maker world. There's no way that the problems can outrun the solutions. At the heart of Ashoka is a design principle of how you treat each other. How do you allow someone to be a change maker? Ashoka is one of the ultimate talent scouts and the ultimate peer network of people who are working individually and now have been collected together to drive all kinds of work forward. Meeting the people who had struggled for 30 plus years uh, humbled me. Beyond the uh, energy that I could get from a fellow, there were actually insights to solving problems. Ashoka is really providing us with the platform to leverage the talent so that we can actually solve these issues on a global scale. The most important about what Ashoka is doing is that they make people believe that change is possible. That belief can go viral. We're building the financing platform for this new distributed clean energy world. Our mission is to connect people through lending to alleviate poverty. Changes the trajectory of life of high school students by engaging them into a path to professional world. The idea that one day every kid in America would get to play every day. Same language subtitling takes children from not being able to read anything to actually being able to read newspapers in about three to five years. Working on sharing biomedical research. The mission is to improve health in underserved communities using mobile technology. And our mission is to increase the number of low-income students who graduate from U.S. colleges and universities. We're not going to wait for good news. We're going to go out and create it. And we're going to create it with these networks of change makers. I guess first off I thought entrepreneurship was more about, you know, starting your own business, which it, which it is. But I think the most surprising thing is it's really about learning about yourself and what you truly value in life and how you can connect those values with your work. You um, research a lot of things outside of class. Um, you talk to companies and see what kind of things are actually going on in your community. Honestly, I think the transparency and honesty with the, between the professors and the students, uh, we really work together as one cohesive cohort. Uh, I think it really comes from the environment of all of us independently growing together. So there's this great sense of interdependence in creating this new pilot program. Uh, so we're kind of like laying down the groundwork for future students at Western. And I think uh, I wasn't prepared for that and it's been really exciting. I think the most surprising thing that I've learned is that academic capability can increase by a long shot when you create a classroom culture that is based around mutual support but also constructive criticism. And as you've seen, you know, we have a lot of fun in class um, as well as get a lot of things done. And I think that balance um, has made me realize something pretty profound about education that we can actually learn a lot more when we're enjoying ourselves <laughs> simultaneously. Welcome back. I am Danica Kylander, and we are continuing this Table Talk episode. Uh, we're going to talk about entrepreneurship and innovation. And right now, we have two students from the Idea Institute, the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Minor, here to join us. So this is Ryan Morgan. Hi, Ryan. Hello, Welcome. Everybody. And Brooke Padden. Um, can you both tell us a little bit about yourselves, like what you're studying here at Western, and why you are interested in entrepreneurship? 
I got involved with the entrepreneurial minor because I went and talked to a pre-business advisor and I was telling her about how I wanted to open up a pie shop one day and she told me that this was something that was brand new and happening and I should be a part of it so I signed up for the class and never looked back. Perfect. What a great story. Thank you, Brooke. Well, I am on my third college now and I decided to come to Western because I have lots of friends up here. I uh, just like the town's close to home for me mm -hmm. and after fall quarter, I met with an advisor that uh, told me about the program. I immediately emailed Dr. S, and he put me in the program, and ever since, it's been an awesome ride. And oh, I guess I should say I'm a management major, and I'm going to fulfill this uh, entrepreneurship minor. So it's going to—it's been a fun ride so far, and I'm excited for what, what next year holds. Perfect. So I'm going to actually start with you, Ryan. Can you tell us a little bit about why, uh, why it's fun? Like what? Sometimes when I hear people talk about their classes, it's rigorous or it's intense or mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot or I hate it, but very rarely do I hear students go, oh, it's a lot of fun. So can you yeah. tell us about that? I, I think most students could vouch for classes not being fun, but yeah. this, this class is a little different. Mm -hmm. We, to start class, we turn on some loud music and we just start dancing and shaking it out and just letting it all go. Mm -hmm. And as we get, we get loosened up and when it's, nothing's awkward in that class. It's Nothing is uptight. No one is, you know, holding themselves in. Everybody lets themselves out, and it's just it's just fun. I don't really know how to explain it. Uh, you kind of got to be there. It's one of those things you got to be there to experience it. I really like that line, actually. <laughs> Maybe that'll be our new tagline. How is it for you? I love it. You get to explore people's creativity a lot. You get to see what people think of when they aren't thinking about work or school or stress and you really get to see people's personality through the tasks that they choose to work through. G can you give us some examples of when you've when you've seen it sort of explore, expand, explode? <laughs> um, we use this term pivot if a project isn't going the direction that we'd like it to and you get to see how people see that something isn't working and then change it to see how it works. Mm -hmm. um, and there's one group this quarter who are E1s who decided to do a music festival in Fairhaven, but then they realized that there were already a bunch of music festivals in Fairhaven, and it really wasn't worth bringing a new one to the table. Mm -hmm. So instead, they decided to throw a music festival on a boat. What, what kind of projects are you working on, actually? Um, the project I'm currently working on, and I've been working on for the past two quarters, is a Western um, food co-op that's mm -hmm. going to be a cafe that we would like to start on Vendors Row that utilizes all of the produce that is made in the Outback because currently it's just being sold, it's not even being sold, it's just being given to the food bank mm -hmm. because they have nowhere else to give it. Mm -hmm. And if we could give Western students the option to eat the food that we grow on campus, we think it would be an amazing thing. Right, perfect. So what kind of things do you consider when you take these ideas and you start developing them and pivoting them and, and deciding whether or not they are ideas worth developing even further to maybe to maybe build a, a business plan around? What kind of things are you really exploring and looking at? What kind of things are you considering? I got it. You got it? <laughs> <laughs> I really like the, I, uh, the aspect of having multiple people in the group. Mm -hmm. When you have groups of three and four, you get everybody that kind of comes in from a different aspect and a different angle, and it all kind of like starts just to come together, and it's really cool to see how one small little idea gets expanded yet refined to something that is actually feasible. Do you, f do you find that happening in any of your other classes or any other classes where there's an experience like <coughs> that where you're getting all these kind of different minds together to build ideas or is that specifically what you came to this class for? I can take that. Okay. <laughs> I think it's in a different light because when you're working on a group project in another class it's more about getting the grade mm -hmm. and trying to find like a union between all of your ideas, mm -hmm. whereas in this class, like a new idea is like a new experience. Like you want the new ideas because they can help you like grow into something that you couldn't have been before. Whereas in a normal class project, that's something you really can't have. I'm going to skip for just a moment here because Art was talking about as as much as it's about ideas. He was talking as much about the empathy muscle. Can you talk about what your experience? And I'll, I'll send this one to you, Brooke, first, um, unless you want to pass it. Um, Talk about building the empathy muscle in this class. Like, where were you before you came in, and what have you been doing along the way, and where are you at with the process? Yeah. Um, this is actually kind of a weird class in the fact that <laughs> we don't just talk about business plans. We 
have to go out and explore our community and, you know, find out more about other people and how that affects us, which is something that I never expected mm -hmm. going into this class. Mm -hmm. But I think it's such a beautiful thing because as you learn about the people in your community, you aren't only learning about what they actually want and what they need in a mm -hmm. business. Tell me how you said it makes, makes you a better person, but how? I think differently, mm. if that makes any sense. Yeah. Like I'm trying to retrain my brain not to see someone and automatically make an assumption and trying to look at them as a whole person instead of just a stereotype and just a lot of examples like that. I, yeah, I first just want to say that I think Bellingham is a perfect place for this program to mm -hmm. kind of start and flourish. Um, if it was in Seattle, it'd have a totally different vibe. You know, it's kind of harder to get out and experience everything in Seattle because it's so big and so diverse. Mm -hmm. And I think that Bellingham is so tight in it that it allows us to really connect with the community. And that's like a big part of this program mm -hmm. that we're in. So what I'm trying to get to is that the empathy part of that is that you can make really close like personal relationships with local business owners. Mm -hmm. People will often go out with the solution for somebody else. I'm going to help you with that. Mm -hmm. But what it does is create this sort of power differential. And what empathy does is sort of create this sense of serving. So when you say stepping into somebody else's shoes, you're like, I'm here with you. We can, we can move forward this together versus I have the solution for you. I will right. be your hero versus I'm pretty sure you're actually going to be your own hero. And if I can help you facilitate that, then I'm here with you. Our class is constantly changing what we're learning because mm -hmm. there's constantly new information in the world. It's not a set rule that we have to learn. It's how can we learn to evolve with the society and get to do it. So I think it's really exciting in the fact that there's really nothing else like it. It's cool that we're kind of on the cutting, cutting edge of this. Yes. That we are kind of trailblazing you definitely are trailblazers. As the second round through, I hear Art say that quite a bit. These are the trailblazers. If you have ideas that you want to get out there to let people know about mm -hmm. your ideas, this is the place to do it in, at Western. You can you can pitch your your thirty second idea to anyone at any time, and if people like it, if people like your idea, you know they'll jump on with you, and you can take it to the next level or the next level. And that's something that not you can't do that in any other class. Mm -hmm. You know, your your management class is just going to be talking about management and human relations. And this class, we can do pretty much anything we want. Yeah. Well, on that note, thank you both for being here, and thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you next time.